The world's second largest battery company, by a pretty big margin, has just confirmed that it will be manufacturing 4680 battery cells for Tesla. And this, my friends, is without question a game-changing move. It clearly gives Tesla a big advantage over its competitors. And it means that Tesla now has six different battery suppliers, not including its own battery manufacturing. In addition to that, I just reported recently of a possible US startup that may be mass manufacturing Tesla batteries for structural packs next year in New York, which will be nickel and cobalt free and have a higher energy density. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Great to have you here on the channel. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. I really appreciate what you do. I'll put a link in the description below to our Patreon account. If you jump on and support us this year, even a dollar a week or whatever it is, even anything is fantastic. But if you don't, that's fine too. Just supporting the channel is awesome. This report comes to you from Tesseradian. Well, they deserve to make this report because they're the ones who made it happen. They contacted LG Energy Solutions and LG Energy Solutions told Tesserati in person, not in person, via email, that they're working to diversify their cylindrical battery lineup and they're currently developing 4680 battery cells. Obviously, there's only one manufacturer in the world that uses them. So clearly they are for Tesla. LG Energy Solutions did not disclose any client related matters specifically regarding 4680 cells. However, the Korean battery supply is a confirmed Tesla partner. LG reported a quarterly revenue of Korean 4.44 trillion or 3.7 billion US dollars. That's an increase of 10.2% from the previous quarter. The company's quarterly revenue growth was contributed to robust demand for pouch and cylindrical battery cells for electric vehicles and small size pouch batteries for IT devices and cars. The company also reported a full year revenue of Korean won 17.85 trillion or 14 billion US dollars for 2021. That's an increase of 42% compared to 2020. And they're claiming they can catch up. I think this is ridiculous, but who knows? They're claiming they can catch up to CATL, who now owns a far greater global share of the world's battery market by developing LFP batteries, which they've been developing now for some time. Well, not that long because the patents only expired recently. And they claim that their LFP batteries will be available next year en masse. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there. LG expects its revenue to reach $16 billion in 2022, up 8% year over year, partly based on steady growth in the EV market. This year, the battery supplier plans to steadily expand its manufacturing capacity. In preparation for partner automakers' new lineup of electric vehicles, LG Energy Solutions will put $6.3 trillion or $5 billion US dollars into capital expenditures up 58% compared to 2021. Now, to grow, you've got to spend. So I like it when I hear these kinds of things. You've got to take a risk. You know, Toyota's hedging its bets, standing on the side of the fence, and they're going to invest some money into EVs and other you know, hybrids and hydrogen vehicles and who knows what else they're spending their money on and maybe lots of meetings because that's what they do in Japan. They do, it's true. But honestly, I like to hear this from LG Energy Solutions, I think this company plans on going all in. I think it really wants to take on CATL. They've been very aggressive lately in terms of the, the way they're talking. They're saying as though, we're going to do it and we're going to kill those guys. And they didn't use those words, but that's the way they're sounding lately. So I like this. I like that they're developing the 4680 cells for Tesla. They don't have to do that, but you've got to go all in. And realistically, they, they do have competition because they're not the only company doing it. Obviously, Panasonic's making them, Tesla's making them themselves, and apparently Samsung is doing it as well. So, you know, it's not like they're going to have exclusive contracts with Tesla to supply these batteries, and it's going to take a big investment for them to make the production lines for 4680 cells. So clearly, they're confident that Tesla is going to buy a lot of them. Here's a quote from LG themselves. They said, LG Energy Solution will excel by prioritizing the fundamentals of quality and securing profitability. That was the CEO of LG Energy. He said, LGS will continue to move forward with bold investment plans needed in the long run. We are confident of our business model of preparing for the future, which will definitely help us lead the industry. I personally don't think that's going to happen. That's my prediction. My prediction is CATL will continue to gain market share. I just think it's the cost advantage of producing en masse in China is too great versus 
doing what LG are doing and they're producing batteries all over the world. Don't get me wrong. I know CHL are planning on building batteries factories as well in Europe, but that's only going to be a small percentage of their total production. I just think you won't be able to compete on cost with LG ES, but you never know. I could be wrong. The other reason is I believe CHL has a big advantage in terms of their lead when it comes to LFP batteries in terms of production capacity. I don't see how LG can catch up there, but you never know. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Tesla's 4680 battery supply seems to be improving, doesn't it? At TSLA's Q4 and full year 2021 earnings call, Tesla stated that all its partners and suppliers were working on its 4680 form factor. So that would suggest that would include maybe not BYD, but at least CATL as well. So they've got CATL, LG Energy Solutions, Panasonic, who knows? Sam, obviously Samsung as well, we know, but who knows? Maybe maybe also Goshan High Tech and potentially even C4V as well. Then you might even have BYD doing it. I mean, they said all of them, so that's possible. You never know. Here's the quote from Tesla. On the 4680 as a form factor, yes, we've engaged with a number of our, you know, partners or suppliers on the form factor, and they're all working on it. And you know, they could cut out the you knows, we don't need those. They look at it the way we look at it, as a way to drive fundamental cost efficiencies in production and also ultimately the design of the cell itself to drive the cost down of the cell, stated Drew Baglino, Tesla senior VP of powertrain and energy engineering during the last earnings call. He seems to use as many filler words as Elon. These guys could work on potentially doing some speech training, but anyway, I guess it's not their priority, is it? The engineering and getting out battery production, vehicle production is obviously far more important. I understand that. It's fair enough. Baglino shared that Tesla focused on growing its cell supply alongside its in-house 4680 effort through 2021. More important than producing 35 or 70 EVs or 50 or whichever legacy automaker you are, is having enough battery supply. More important. Remember, first principles. He added that sales from supplies exceeded Tesla's other factory limiting constraints. Tesla's senior VP of powertrain and Energy Engineering stated that the 4680 cells are not a constraint to the company's 2022 volume plans based on the information it had during the Q4 2021 earnings call. And I have to say, I was a little surprised to hear that. I still, I'm not sure how that's possible, but it's great news regardless. Tesla believes the first vehicles with 4680 cells could be delivered this quarter. And as we know, they've already been built. They're sitting in the parking lot waiting at Gigafactory Texas to go out to new owners. If you're one of them and you get one of these vehicles, please contact me. Let me know what your experience is like. I'm excited to hear about it. Giga Texas obviously is already building Tesla Model Ys with structural packs, 4680 cells, and Giga Castings. Three big advantages versus the current Tesla Model Y. As we know, the numbers 4680 refer to the size of the battery. And that's it. But there are other advantages to the cell. Being much bigger, it actually means that you're wasting less space in the pack in terms of materials. Less materials leads to more energy density. Another advantage of this battery is the fact that it's a tabless design. This allows the battery to have a much lower internal resistance, translating into lower losses of power and less likelihood of battery cells overheating. In addition, other parts of the pack's design involve improved cooling. And this is a big advantage to EVs EVs with obviously better cooling in them can allow the packs to have a higher lifespan and to have less damage to the battery when fast charging. I have to say, I'm excited when I hear this. I'm excited not necessarily for Tesla. That's great for Tesla, but I'm more excited because this means that more battery manufacturers are getting more serious. They're investing many, many billions of dollars. The more they invest, the better it is for us as consumers. We have more choice. We have more electric cars. We have more availability of electric cars. More countries will get them sooner. The sooner, the better. It all excites me. It's great news. I love to hear this stuff. Let me know if you know of any news. Send me an email. Send me a message. Jump on the Facebook page. You can, you can message me. I'm sorry I haven't responded to all of your messages, but sometimes there's too many, but I'll do my best to respond to you if I can. Have a great day, and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.